welcome back to the show. Now, as Canadians, you might, might not think about the Charter every day, but it was created 40 years ago to protect our fundamental rights and freedoms. But what happens when the people meant to uphold those rights are the ones violating them? The Toronto Star recently scoured thousands of court records from across the country and found 600 cases where police officers seriously violated charter rights. In their investigative series, Unchartered, they set out to answer why this happened and what needs to change. One of the investigation's lead reporters, Rachel Mendelson, joins us today to discuss her findings. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you for your work. This was a joint investigation with Steve Buse from the Hamilton Spectator. As we mentioned, you scoured thousands of records, uh, court records, where judges found, quote, serious charter rights violations by police officers. Can you give us an example of what constitutes a serious violation? Sure. So a serious charter violation, one that met the standard, um, the threshold that led it to be included in our investigation, is one where a judge said um, that it risked eroding public confidence in the administration of justice. Okay. So these are judges that decided that these were serious charter violations. And one particularly egregious example is, you know, there's a, a fellow in, um, in Calgary who is, uh, breaks his house arrest. He has a loaded uh, handgun in his vest, um, the cops trail him to uh, a convenience store where he's making a purchase. He then tries to evade them. They unleash a police dog um, who, you know, takes him down. He's arrested. All of that is, is okay. It's within the bounds of the job of the police. But what goes to the serious level of a charter violation is that over the next several hours, the police are, are mocking him and taunting him as he's asking for help. Um, you know, he's got blood seeping through uh, his wounds as a result of these dog bites. And in fact, one officer makes up a, a song about him and is taunting him and mocking him. And so that shocked the judge and it led the judge to throw out the charges. Wow. Um, so when a judge does find that a person's charter rights have in fact been seriously violated, for example, that example you just gave us, they then make decisions that have major impact uh, on all of us. So how do those decisions impact public safety then? So in that case, we interviewed, um, we interviewed the accused in that case. And he said to us, if the police had done their job right, I would still probably be in jail right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he had a loaded handgun. He had breached his house arrest. Um, you know, he had, he had every right sort of to be arrested and to be charged with some serious offenses. And because of the charter violations, the judge had no choice but to throw out the charges. And so in that case, you know, a guilty individual walks free. Mm. <sighs> And if that's not shocking enough, one of the most shocking parts of your investigation is that when you, uh, through your research, found these hundreds of charter rights violations, you then bring them to police forces. Um, it was that that was the first time they heard about it. Yeah. Like they didn't even know. So what response did they have for you when you told them, hey, this is what you've been doing wrong? Right. So that was, um, you know, really kind of the thrust of the investigation was to find out, is there uh, a system where police are informed when judges find that their officers have seriously violated the charter? And what we found is that these lines of communication are either broken, they don't exist. Many police forces wouldn't tell us um, whether they knew about the, uh, these charter breaches, but of those who were candid, um, in many cases, they didn't know. And uh, Toronto police comes to mind as one where in two thirds of all the cases we found, they, they did acknowledge that they were unaware of the charter violations until we brought them to their attention. Okay, I'm just shocked by that. Like, they just didn't even know. Um, okay, so if police forces and the individual police officers, they're not being told, hey, you just violated someone's charter rights, what does that say about accountability for police forces? And what does that say about then discipline Right. So discipline is a bit of a, of a, black, a black hole um, in mm -hmm. Canada. In a lot of jurisdictions, there are laws. Um, in Ontario, the Police Services Act, for example, prevents a lot of information from being made public about what police forces do to discipline their members in these cases. And so that presents a huge problem in terms of mm -hmm. uh, our ability to assess, you know, are the police um, who commit these serious violations, are they being dealt with appropriately? Um, we, we can tell you that, you know, in our investigation, we were only able to find evidence in a handful of cases uh, that there was actually, you know, police uh, discipline, formal police discipline um, in those cases. Wow. Okay, you know, the thing is, on the one hand, police work, it's dangerous. This is dangerous work. On the other hand, we do have these systemic issues 
that you're highlighting today and that your pieces, your reports highlight. So when you brought these violations to the attention of police, did they seem willing and eager to make change? Mm. So in these, there were 600 cases that we yeah. identified. Um, that accounts for 40 police services right across the country. Okay. Some of those, you know, wouldn't really engage on that question with us. But 11 police forces told us in no uncertain terms that they support the creation of a system where they can be informed. Um, about these violations so that then they can decide, you know, how they're going to deal with it. And because, you know, especially in Toronto, um, you know, where they were more candid uh, than some other jurisdictions, the former police chief did tell us that, you know, he wants to know about these cases because that's the only way that, that they can um, ensure public trust and, uh, you know, hold their officers accountable. So, listen, police forces across the country, as a result of your um, investigations, and this is why journalism matters, they have actually started to make some changes. So tell us about some of those changes and where they're happening. Well, I mentioned Toronto Police. So they're currently looking at 94 cases um, that we brought to their attention to see if there's any discipline warranted, to see, you know, if there's any educational opportunities that have to be given to these officers to see if there's any policy changes that are required. In Waterloo, uh, one of the cases we brought to the attention of the police chief did result in some discipline. Um, unfortunately, because of the secrecy we mentioned earlier um, and that we found in our, in our investigation across the country, they're unable to tell us which case it was, which officer it was, and what discipline hmm. um, was meted out. Um, but suffice it to say, you know, there was some change there and an impact. And then in Saskatchewan, a detachment of the RCMP has actually made a policy change so that they are now in communication with the Crown every time there's one of these cases that's brought to their attention. Okay, but you use the word secrecy. So it's not just that these, vi these charter rights are being violated. It is then the secrecy with which everything operates. So transparency is an issue, even with progress being made. So can there even be a public trust without transparency? Mm. I mean... I just think about uh, something that uh, the professor who we teamed up with at, at Western University's law school to do this project, mm -hmm. they're investigating as well charter violations as part of, um, you know, an attempt to look at hidden racial profiling in policing. And he, th what he said was, no, you know, without, without transparency and without communication, there can be no accountability. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for being here and for this work that you're doing and continue to do. We really, really appreciate your time and your Thank effort. you for having me. Hey there, wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.